we have a Sparky. Let's go talk to Sparky uh, and see what's going on over there. Sparky, bring it in here, big guy. Hey, man. I enjoyed the discussion on uh, on sports. Very difficult decisions being made across various leagues, pro and and college. And, and think back to your Army, Army days, Zach. Uh, a commander had to make tough decisions, right? But the good ones, they relied upon the information given to them by their staff officers, their warrant officers, their senior NCOs, so that whatever decision they made, they could make an informed decision. Now look at government leaders at all levels, school administrators, sports league leaders and managers. They're, they have to rely upon information that's nebulous at best. The numbers that are coming in across the, across the world on, on, on coronavirus have been demonstrated to be cooked, exaggerated, uh, uh, manipulated for political purposes, and and I don't know how they do it. I don't know how you can come to strategic and and management and health and leadership decisions when the very foundation for your decision is based on information that you can't trust. So you can imagine the frustration of, across the nation with your callers and sports fans and people just want to go, go back to what they know how to do, and that's get back to work. No, and that's and that's you, exactly it's right. Frustrating. It's it's a mis- it, like you were trying to hit a a moving target, and and thank you for the call, Sparky. We appreciate that. I, I think a lot of people would feel exactly the same way. And you're exactly right. When I was in the military, we trusted the leadership that started at the top with our president at the time. It was President Barack Obama, and and he was our commander in chief. And from there, the chain of command was established and people were put in positions to make decisions and oftentimes making decisions with the lives of their men. I mean, truly making decisions that meant life or death for the men that were serving under their command. And so ultimately, uh, using data to make decisions is the only way to move forward. But when the decisions or when the when the information rather is a moving target when it's fluid or as you said it's cooked uh or or uh, manipulated for political gain um it makes it a very difficult target to to hit and so it's it you know, I don't think it's that difficult of a decision at all. Um, I think it is a very straightforward decision. I think that it's a decision that uh, that that people need to make. Looking at the fact that ninety nine point nine eight percent of people that get this disease have absolutely no problem with it, and uh, I mean, I, I, if we look back at H one N one, we've got a long way to go before we even get close to to the numbers. And I didn't even know there was a pandemic going on. Like uh, during Barack Obama's president, I didn't even know there was a pandemic. I didn't even know what was going on. It was not, I mean, the games weren't stopped. Uh, sports weren't killed. Um, schools didn't, nothing changed. Nothing changed. And it was a pandemic in much greater scale than than what we're dealing with right now. And so again, your, your Sparky is dead on. And I understand your frustration. Trust me, we are equally as frustrated here. Um, but but again, you know, what what do you do? And, and I'll tell you what you do. You make your difference in november you make your difference at the ballot box is something dale and i were talking about this morning when he was in was was that you know the reality is what and i asked him the question what happens when people become ungovernable and he said that won't happen why won't it happen because people will look at their lives and they'll say you know what this isn't really the America that I signed up for, but dang, it's a whole lot better than Rwanda or than the Middle East or than any other third, second and third world country out there. And so, you know what? It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. In comparison to the rest of the world, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. And so it, you make your call, you make your decision, you, you, your activism is best used in the way that you vote in being able to go and make your voice heard to the people uh, in power you you are choosing those people um and so it that is where i would em- empower you and people like you to sparky to to make your voice heard you make your voice heard through your activism and your vote and your imp- employing and 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 pushing people to join you in doing so the more active that we can become politically, the more difference we can make and the more our voice can be.
be heard, and that's where it has to start. Otherwise, what are we really doing? Uh, and and honestly, the, the think about this. Everybody says sports and politics don't play, and trust me, I don't watch ESPN for that exact reason. I do love some Korean baseball. I've got to be honest. But outside of that, uh, it's become too political in the sports world. And so and so. But that being said, like your political choices, your votes absolutely affect your sports. You don't think that the politicians that have power, that have a voice right now, are impacting whether or not college football is played? They have set their sights squarely on college football because Donald Trump wants college football. or because And, and it's become a political token. And the reality is the, 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 the well-being of those young men and women who play sports, who've worked their entire life to get the scholarship to the school, who, who everybody wants to say if somebody comes to college, if, if a Clemson football player comes and Dabo Sweeney lets them get coronavirus, and they die the blood's on his hands well who's whose hands are the blood on when these kids don't come back to school and somebody is shot in the streets of their hometown or 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 or, or they make you know they they are out driving there's an accident there's what i mean because because there was no accountability because there was no uh bring them to school put them in their safe environment Who whose accountability is that i mean is there not also accountability to those making decisions the school presidents the politicians are they not also accountable to those young men and women who are trusting them to make the right decision for their future too and, and so and again i'm not trying to put i'm not trying to pass the buck and say well it's the legislator's fault if some college kid dies at home because he didn't have school necessarily necessarily but we do have to ask those questions if we're all if we're going to pass the blame to president trump or whoever because somebody gets coronavirus and dies or then we also have to say if we if we don't allow these kids to come back and something bad happens there then it's also the result of those choices that this happened and so we just have to be consistent and that's my issue my issue is consistency and the lack thereof. And the reality is, I don't know if it ever gets any better without us deciding to get engaged, to get involved in doing something. We've got to do something. And the way we do that is in November. Uh, it, the, we've never faced a more important election. And that's, and, and, you know, that is the case every year. I get that. But this year, I believe, has a little more significance than, uh, than maybe the elections of, of the recent past because of the implications of Sleepy Joe taking office. The reality is, he's got 90 days in office before he's incapacitated and he there's somebody else who's number two uh kami kamala is 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 in charge or whomever he chooses uh, and there's a story here i've got pulled up that we didn't get to today maybe we'll jump into tomorrow but you've been listening to hometown heartbeat here on wvn and i'm zach walker your big beautiful bearded host today's show produced by producer connor and dale jackson slash antonio on the on the old board over here we will see you guys in the morning make sure to check us out the hometown heartbeat.com the hometown heartbeat.com 